G'day. Welcome to another curriculum burst. Let's do a scary looking question from grade 12. It goes as follows. A function f is defined by f of z equals 4 plus i z squared plus alpha z plus gamma. Okay, looks scary already. And that's defined for all complex values z where alpha and gamma are complex numbers and i squared equals negative 1. Okay, at least i is being used the way I expect to be used. Suppose that f of 1 and f of i are both real. Okay, I'll suppose that. And uh, the question is, what is the smallest possible value of the modulus of alpha plus the modulus of gamma? Oh heavens, oh heavens, that is just scary. That is just scary. Um, what am I doing? First of all, let me just copy down the equation. So f of z is what, four plus i z squared plus alpha z plus gamma. So they called this a complex function. Now what does that mean, complex function? Well, obviously you've got complex numbers. I guess z is a complex number. So this is a thing, all right, this is a formula. You put in a complex input, you know, some number like three plus two i, and out should come a complex output. That's what they mean by a complex function. Now obviously if I put in some complex number here, I'm gonna do some work and the out comes a complex answer. Um, except this alpha and this gamma stuff, that's weird. Uh, what is that? The question says that each complex numbers, all right, so, Alpha is its own little complex number, a plus i, b, say, and gamma is its own complex number, uh, c plus i, d, where a, b, c, and d are reals. Right, so there's, there's a ghastly looking formula. True, put in complex inputs, outcome complex outputs. Um, now what are we doing? Suppose that f of 1 and f of i are both real. What's the smallest possible value of the absolute value of alpha plus the absolute value of gamma, or the modulus of alpha plus the modulus of gamma? All right, all right. Um, I don't know how I'm going to handle this question. This looks so strange, so bizarre. I've actually not seen questions like this before. Um, well, I guess the best strategy here is strategy number two, which is do something. And this is where I really don't have a clue what I'm doing, but just do something nonetheless. Um, well, for starters, if alpha and gamma are complex numbers, let me just write those into the form instead. At least that's something. So f of z is actually going to be, what, 4 plus i z squared plus alpha times z, so it's a plus ib times z plus gamma, which is c plus id. All right, there's something. Actually, there's more to the question. It says that suppose that f of 1 and f of i are both real. Okay, well, I guess I can put in 1. I guess I can put in i. Okay, I can at least do that. So f of 1, so z is 1, would be f of uh, 4 plus i, 1 squared, so it's just 4 plus i plus a plus ib times z, so it's just a plus ib if z is 1, plus c plus id. All right, that's f of 1, uh, but it says it's real. Okay, so it's got a real part, which is 4 plus a plus c, plus it's i times, what is it, 1 plus a b plus a d. Oh, so if this is a real value, its imaginary part should be zero. So I guess I've just learned that we want one plus b plus d to be zero. Don't know what it does for us, but I feel like it's gonna be important. All right, let's do it again. Uh, the other piece of information was f of i. All right, now I'm gonna leave that one to you, but it too is gonna to have some real part, whoop, plus some imaginary part, and it's gonna have some equation that I can add up to here and I'll get two equations. So before I even do that, I mean, I can do that work myself, but I'm just trying to see, is that going to lead somewhere? Because uh, what have I done now? I've already actually answered the question. I've forgotten what was the question. Uh, the question was find the smallest possible value, the absolute value of alpha plus the absolute value of gamma. Okay, I've got to remember what this means. And so in complex numbers, what does the modulus of a number mean? Well, alpha is, a plus ib. If I remember, in complex number theory, the modulus of a complex number is its distance from the origin. So it's a units in the real direction, b units in the imaginary direction. So this is just Pythagoras' theorem. This is just a squared plus b squared. That's the distance of this complex number from the origin, plus the distance of this complex number from the origin, which I guess is c squared plus d squared. So somehow, the question wants us, what is that? I'm reading, I'm reading the question about a thousand times over and over again because I just don't have it in my head. What is the smallest possible value of that? All right, all right. Now an approach is starting to come, come to me. There's one equation. Maybe I can solve for b or solve for d or something, but I bet I can solve for one of the variables and put it in here. And we're gonna get a second equation. Just didn't, haven't been out yet. Maybe I can also solve for another variable and put it in here. 
and then I'm going to cross my fingers and hope it becomes clear what goes on next. Maybe this, maybe this looks like magically nice that I can see what the smallest value is going to have to be. All right. Don't really know if that's going to get somewhere, but I invite you to try that. See if you can find the second equation, do the appropriate substitutions into this, and see if it actually makes sense. And when you do that, look at it. Get an answer if you can, and then compare your answer with the essay that goes with this video. Because I actually thought about this too already. I'm going to make a little confession. Um, and, you know, it's got some good, good thinking here. So see if you come up with the same thoughts that I came up with as I went through this process myself. It's actually a lot of fun. Great. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.